All right, guys, welcome to day 66 of Onshape. What we're going to make today is we're going to be making a mailbox. However, uh, nothing too crazy about this design, but I did do a lot of kind of back-to-back -back, uh, quick modifications. Thought I was to build this quickly, and I thought, hey, this is worth making a video over. Uh, this is going to be an assignment for my students anyways, so let's build a mailbox. All right. One thing that I am going to note, though, is there's something new in this video I haven't done before, is states. So our named positions. And so what I have is I have this mailbox in an open and a closed position. And so what it is is our predetermined positions set for my design, and it will automatically move them where I want them to. I thought this was really cool, uh, especially might be helpful for automatas or some other pieces that you want to show multiple states or multiple moving parts and not actually have to um, move them around. You just want to show them as like static states. Really cool stuff, uh, or at least I think it's really cool. But in any case, we are going to create a new part studio, and we are going to do, I would say, combining a lot of the skills we've already set so far, just do this really quickly. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to create a rectangle, and uh, I'm just going to go have a dimension of, let's say, you know, 12 inches tall, and let's say 8 inches wide. That looks pretty good dimensions for a mailbox. Just kind of rough dimensions overall. We're going to go ahead and extrude this on through and give it a depth of, I don't know, let's say 20 inches. Looks good. You're like, wait, but mailboxes are rounded. And so we're going to use the fillet command, which I just really like because what it does is it takes your designs that look really, I would say, blocky or staticky and gives them. Uh, a rounded off edge and so fillets you'll find more often in welds or some other things like that but um, for our fillet we're gonna do four inches and it'll cut it into that perfect circle shape looks good uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use I'm gonna do the shell command we're gonna hollow out the center of that and we're gonna give it a thickness of let's do an eighth inch there we go we already have the body of our mailbox made. So we're just going to call this body. Next thing we do is we're going to click on sketch and we're going to go to this front plane right here. Right click, hit view normal 2 and we're going to use project. We like using project because what it does is it projects all of the geometry from the body onto this new sketch. So if I make that body invisible or inactive, you can see I now have all the dimensions set for the mouth of that lid. Looks good. So we just hit the green check mark, hit good. Go and extrude, highlight it all, boom, look at this. This is what I'm talking about, it's like, I'm incorporating a lot of quick, I would say edits to make a design really easy. And there we go. So we have our body, we have our lid, let's rename our lid, and let's just call it lid. Looks great. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a handle in there. But I'm not gonna actually do a sketch plane here, I'm actually gonna use my origin planes and I'm gonna find my right plane. And I'll show you why here in a second. So we're gonna create a new sketch on this plane. Right click, hit view normal to sketch plane. And we're gonna use project again. So we're gonna use project this front line right here. So it's, it's tangent to the lid plane. And we're gonna make our body disappear to make sure that everything looks good. Cool. All right, now for our Let's do for our handle, we're going to do corner rectangle again. We're going to make sure one corner touches the lid so far. And we're going to dimension that to come out, let's say, an inch and a half. And let's do a two inch depth. Looks good. Cool. We're going to extrude. A symmetric extrusion. Man, we're just using all kinds of tools I haven't used in a while. We're gonna bring it all the way out to where it looks about where we want it to be, so that's about five and a half inches. Looks good. We're gonna use the fillet command again, and this is why I just love the fillet command, is because it takes your designs and it creates, let's do a much, much smaller radius, there we go. It creates your designs and makes them look really, really polished 
without having to do too much work. You're letting the computer do the heavy lifting. All right, we're gonna use the shell command again one more time. So I'm gonna rotate down to the bottom. We're gonna shell that out. And now we've got our handle installed. Looks great. So we got our body, we have the lid. Now let's put on our flag. So I'm gonna click on sketch, this right plane. Hit view normal two. And let's dimension this to be, um, let's do a half inch for the hinge on the on that flagpole. So we're gonna bring this out. Half. Uh, let's do a thickness of, let's say, an uh, eighth of an inch. That flag is not going to be very thick. Looks good. And then I'm actually going to go and create a new sketch as well. And we're going to create our flag from it. We're going to use project again. So use. We're going to project that geometry on there. But we're not going to put this as part of the body. So we're going to make that inactive. And instead, we're just going to draw our flag. So let's go ahead and do some lines. Let's do, that looks about right. Just get my overall geometry right. Let's do that as 10 inches. Let's do that as four inches. I don't know, just kind of eyeballing the geometry of what looks good. Um, let's go ahead and also make this um, parallel. So we're gonna make this parallel to this, straighten it up, and our flag looks pretty good. We can do some trimming. So we can trim up that edge, hit the green check mark, shift E for extrude, and bring our flag out an eighth of an inch. Since it's a new, since it's not gonna be part of our body, there we go, and we have our flag. So I'm gonna right name this, right click, hit rename, we're gonna do flag. And we're only six and a half minutes in. So I just kinda just wanted to show you how quick the process be. Once you figure out the tools and kinda what they're used for, you can really quickly make some designs on the fly and make the computer do the heavy lifting rather than you. So we're going to sketch on this bottom plane, hit view normal too. And there's a little trick about finding the center of a square by drawing two diagonal lines. Looks great. But since we don't want this to be part of our sketch, we're gonna highlight everything. Right click, hit construction. That way it doesn't get in my way when I'm gonna make my post down here at the bottom. So we're gonna have R for rectangle, find that center point right there. And I believe most mail, mail posts are four by fours, but I don't think four by fours are actually four by fours. I think they're actually three and a half by three and a half. Now that I think about it, I could be wrong on that. I might Google that later. In any case, we're gonna extrude, bring this on through. Notice since the bottom of these outside construction lines are there, it doesn't think that um, I want this to be part of my extrusion, which is why construction lines can be really, really helpful. Okay, um, I don't know. Let's do a 48 inch length on our post. Click the green check mark, and man, things are looking good. Let's bring everything back in. Right click, hit rename, and call this bottom part a post. Sweet. Uh, you can go in here and edit some appearances and stuff. So I know for, you know, the flag, for example, I think that's supposed to be a red color. I don't know if that's like mandated by mail, but at least most red fl flags I think about in the mail have a red color to them. You can also just edit individual faces. So let's say, for example, let's go ahead and make this post and the flag inactive. Highlight everything, right click, Edit appearance for two parts. Make it all the same color. Let's do a cool like green. Let's do. Let's do like the Hulk green. There we go. That looks cool. All right, we're doing a Hulk themed mailbox now. So we got the flag. Let's give a purple flare to this handle. So if we select individual faces and add appearance to the faces and not to the whole parts, you can change the color of individual faces and not affect the whole part. So I right click, add appearance faces. Let's do like a deeper purple. Maybe not that deep. There we go. And there we go. We have our Hulk themed mailbox. Looks pretty good. Cool. So 
in about 10 minutes, almost nine and a half minutes, we've made our uh, mailbox. Now let's go to an assembly. So let's create assembly. And here's some new things that I haven't really done before, but I found super helpful. So we're gonna bring that whole part studio in, hit the green check mark. And of course, something's not going to move, but we're gonna actually let's go and take that post and let's fix it. So post doesn't move. However, since some things are in kind of that rigid state that I need them in, like my body, for example, and the post, we can click this group button. And what it'll do is it'll take the states that those two parts are in and it'll treat them as one part. So if you have a subassembly, for example, and all those parts of the subassembly are rigid, rather than trying to do a mate for all those parts, you can just make those two pieces act as a group. So I should be able to take the flag off, but I can't move the, the post. I didn't do a single mate, I just did a group. And I just find that a little bit helpful when uh, maybe a lot of pieces in your, your design are static. So let's now move on and put in some revolutes. So let's revolute this mate. So we're gonna put you know, this front edge right here, center of that is gonna revolve around the center of, now I know we're not really doing all the hinges, for example, um, and that's just because um, I don't plan on 3D printing this part, but um, we were able to use some pieces that I haven't done before. So let's click play, looks good, but of course we don't wanna break physics, so we're gonna set some limits. Notice how this zero degree symbol is to the right. So that tells me positive is to the right. So what I'm actually gonna do is make zero a maximum and negative 180 a minimum. Click solve, and then, because what, what has happened is actually is that my uh, angle is rotating to the left, that's where I want, rather than to the right. So that's what we did, negative 80, negative 180 to zero. Looks good. Hit the green check mark. Now let's do another one. We're gonna have, you know, this flag is gonna revolve with that, hit play, just to make sure it works in the correct direction, looks good. But then notice how it went to the left as positive. So that tells me for my limits, I'm gonna go from zero to 90. Click play, oh, I gotta hit solve first. Hit solve, and there you go, it'll rotate 90 degrees. Hit the green check mark, and we are done. We've made our part, however, Here's one thing I wanna do, is I wanna create states or named positions. So we're gonna click on name position. We're gonna call this first position closed and click the plus icon. And what it'll do is it'll capture that position and all the parts and where they're at. So then I'm gonna take my hinge and I'm gonna open it all the way and bring, bring the flag all the way up. And then we're gonna click the name new name position as open and click the plus icon. Now here's why this is helpful, is because we can now switch back and forth to open and close positions and not have to actually touch our design. So if we were to showcase this, for example, we could showcase different positions without having to worry about trying to animate mates or trying to get uh, other pieces involved as well. All right guys, that's gonna be it for making a mailbox. We did a lot of, I would say, helpful tricks on making designs. We introduced new named positions uh, and we just made a mailbox. It was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If these have been helpful, please, please, please like and subscribe. Show me down some, uh, some love down in the comment section. If you need help, feel free to reach out on any social media platform you're able to find me on. And until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.